three sets of 12 reps. Let's see. Dumbbell bicep curls, tricep extensions. Hmm. And back extensions, yeah. A little peeve about the lack of proper equipment. No bother. Chin up. Only eight more luxury coffins to make quota in backwoods. I mean, flatwoods. <laughs> uh, be difficult, given the financial situation around here. Just need to remind them of our friends, the Chinese. Nah, I'll be back on the plane to Ipswich within a fortnight. <sighs> Gather it'll be the bench press today. Yeah, again. Responders. And Mr. Fan hands are out of control. Evacuate civilians and take down those supervisors. Once they're dealt with, you'll have to reboot the server. Again.
interview two, Reverend Delbert Winters. Hi, I met you in the woods near the Morgantown Airport. You were picking flowers. Why? Uh, I was uh, harvesting a lot of stuff, actually. I, I hunted deer recently. Looked strange, but tasted fine. Hmm, okay. Well, what's a basic easy meal that someone who's been surviving on cans could make? Uh, you can make tea with dried flowers. It's not much, but it can soothe your stomach. I don't know what this flower is called, but I, I call it a soup flower. <laughs> if you add it in water, you can make a tea. Same with rabbit meat or chicken meat. You can easily make soups with boiled water. God willing, we can adapt old recipes to new types of food. What do you mean by that? Back in the Army. We got sent off to places with weird fish I never heard of and weird veggies I never seen again. You know, we had to cook with them still. Just pretend it's catfish or something. You see how it turns out. But now, well, whew, let me say that I've seen some weird stuff. I thought maybe it was unholy, but... These are all the creation of our Lord, even if man has manipulated them. And dang it, they're still edible. Oh, um, okay. Well, uh, what kind of veggies do you eat? Yeah, there are still some edible veggies out there, like melons, carrots, and gourds. You know, I found some tomatoes and potatoes uh, growing together somehow pollinating each other or something. I ate one, and it was kind of like a ketchup-flavored cardboard, but... <laughs> hey, I'm alive. You might have to experiment like that. Don't be too picky if it keeps you alive to see the end of times. Sounds like you've been thinking about this for a while. You could say that. I, I knew the end was coming for a good long while, and, well... It's here. And the end will come again. I have faith that there's a reason for all this. And that we need to survive to see our Lord again. And well, we need food to survive. Fair enough. Thanks for the tips, Delbert.
Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flat Woods. In the last episode, Pioneer Scout Fred Fisher met a curious girl named Sally while hiding in the dark. But as it turned out, they weren't alone. <laughs> church to the responders for their outpost here, and, uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see, helping folks through thick and thin, till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most, it was time. This was the end, but, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake, that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to have been thought. So I asked him. I asked how. Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. 
You ought to cook that first, I warned him. It seemed obvious. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But until then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right?
talking to this? Oh, uh, yeah, am I loud enough? Okay. Um, hi. What do you want me to say exactly? Yeah, so just talk about how you got here and maybe a little bit about your life. This is a historic document. Go ahead, Tabitha. Okay, 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 so, well, thanks. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> I've been sober for nine days. Um, I got here nine days ago. My name is, is Tabitha. And this is my story. I just found out about everything. <laughs> The war, the bombs, I, I just... I just realized this was, uh, <laughs> really happening. For years, I thought the cans were playing tricks with my mind. Hurting my brain. I thought it was the worst trip ever. Every time I had come out of my haze, long enough to look for food, I'd buy more cams and, well, they kept going. And I kept seeing madness. Look, um, I would have been wandering around fighting giant rats and eating garbage if not for the responders. They're, they're good folks. That doc in the church, um, got me some meds that are helping out a lot. And they have group therapy meetings, and, and it's good. And I, I, I think it's helping. But listen, um, you should avoid the mountains. <laughs> They'll just get you mixed up. Get you doing things you don't want to do. So many chems up there. I spent too long there and I couldn't think right. I, I couldn't. Oh, it, it's okay, Tabitha. Remember what we said in the group? Take your addictol and rest, and things will be okay soon. It, it's okay. We're here for you. Yeah. When I feel better, I'm going out west, though. Getting out of this place. Getting out, getting away from the cams, all of this. I feel better every day, but, you know, years of cams, years of rads, years of sleeping in the mud. It adds up. Yeah. I'm gonna get back to sleep now, okay? Okay. Thanks for sharing your story, Tabitha. Get some sleep. You'll be okay. You're safe now. This is my first interview with another survivor, Kesha McDermott. my first interview with another survivor, Kesha McDermott. She found me trying to break into a nuka cola machine and um, showed me a different way. So, Kesha, can you tell us a bit about how we can make sure our water is safe for drinking? I'll try to keep it to the basics for training purposes. Oh, it's not complicated, really. Find water and strain out any big particles and chunks. Then, boil it in a pot over an open fire for a minute or two, then let it cool. Should be fine. 
Like, <laughs> like making tea, right? <laughs> uh huh. You joined the responders a while ago and helped Equipment develop a program to train volunteers. Assistance. So, uh, were you a survivalist prior to all of this? <laughs> you could say that. I taught high school kids. I used to talk about this very thing to them. Practical application of the sciences. It's Equipment fascinating, but... Assistant you never required. realize how important some things will be down the road, do you? I guess not. So if we were students of yours, what would you tell us about the world now? How can we survive? That's a good question, Dasa. Well, I would tell you all to remain calm and focus on surviving. The first thing you need to do is get yourself some clean drinking water. It's likely all you'll find is dirty water, but that's okay. We can fix it. Dirty water carries a small chance of disease, and it's a bit radioactive. You'll probably survive if you drink it, but you shouldn't take that risk. It's better than toxic water or nuclear waste, though, which are both very harmful and should be boiled thoroughly first. Got that, Dasa? Yes, um, contaminated water should be boiled. Okay, that sounds easy enough. So, boiled water is safe? It's mostly safe, but still a Equipment bit radioactive. What you really want is purified required. water. Oh, purified water. Okay, how do I get that? You can build machines that will do it for you, and that's the most reliable way. Building them requires some space and time and plenty of materials. But... On my way up here from Watoga, I found purified water occasionally in supply caches and medical kits. <laughs> so, keep your eyes peeled. If I boil water, and that's mostly safe, aside from a teensy bit of radiation, what about tea? Most Our folks around here are tea required. drinkers, as you know. I recall many a night sipping tea on the stoop, watching lightning bugs, and reading a book in peace and quiet. Tell me that's still okay, Kesha. Oh, bless your heart. It's probably as good as boiled water anyway. Maybe even better if you add anything medicinal to it. Some survivors add all sorts of flowers and herbs to boiled water, and they swear by it. Personally, I stick with purified water. Yeah, to each their own. Okay, got it. Uh, switching tracks a bit. I know you're awfully busy with your latest research in Flatwoods. Can you explain that a bit? <laughs> of course! I'm testing local <coughs> natural water over time in Appalachia. Gathering data, monitoring radiation and contamination levels, and all of that. I analyze the data in my lab to look for long-term trends and use those trends to determine how we can use the water right now. We use the water for more than just drinking, you know. It feeds our plants, which feed our animals, so we need to know how things are changing. You got a lot of work cut out for you. I'm glad you joined the responders. That data sounds invaluable. <laughs> it is. I've integrated the data collection and research into the responders survivors volunteer program as well. I am still a teacher after all. Wow. Then there you have it, folks. Thanks for talking with us today, Kesha. And thanks for showing us all how to live a little safer. <laughs> Class dismissed. Hi. Dasa asked me if I would talk about um how I got here. She asked everybody, so I, I said okay. My name, my name is Colonel. 
and I'm 13 years old. I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Um, the bombs and the messed up people and the cows with two heads and all of it. Equipment was bad. contaminated. Just Assistant bad. I, I cheated on my spelling test. I, I kicked Chip Wilkins in the shins until he cried. I pushed Rosie McCloy down the stairs. Um, I, I cut holes in the bottom of all the gym shorts and I put glue in the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. I told Harold Newell to eat 10 dead flies a day in order to grow muscles and uh, I put Nuka-Cola in the rat cage water bottles at the pet store. And um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry Assistant about everything. Required. Because my dad said if I wasn't this way, the bad things would happen. I haven't seen Daddy since the bombs, and I, I guess he left because of that, too. It's okay. I'm, I'm trying to be good now, though. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a volunteer, but Dasa said I can help collect food and water, so I'm getting better, I promise. And, um, Daddy, if you're listening, I, I promise I won't be bad anymore, so you can come back now, okay? Okay. Bye. We call it the Great War now. It's not been long, and things have been rough. Welcome to Survivor Stories. I'm Dasa Ben Ami, a responder. I've been working with the responders for a couple of years now. I'm from Charleston originally, so it was easy to join up. What wasn't easy was the work. Rebuilding Appalachia from the rubble while survivors flock to us regularly from all over. So many have come and gone. Their stories untold, their names lost to time. I thought we should preserve this history somehow. I've decided to ask people to record their thoughts, their stories, anything they want to preserve forever. I'll call this series the Survivor Stories. I'll start with me. I was an anthropology PhD student at vault Tech University. Final year. I was printing my thesis when I heard the sirens. I thought for sure my father, a vault Tech employee, could take us all with him, but only two reservations came through. I refused to go. With my little brother, he went to the vault. They could not persuade me, though they tried. In the end, I pushed them inside it, and that was it. After that, I, I went back home to Charleston and, well, survived. Eventually, the responders formed, and I, I signed up right away. It was so hard. The flood was devastating. Relocating to Morgantown Airport, and now Flatwoods has been... I, I remain optimistic. Been with them now for, uh, oh, I guess two years. We have big plans. So much to help. Maybe, just maybe, we're good enough to be okay. In the meantime, I will continue to record stories of survivors when I can. We are your history. This is Dasa Ben Ami, signing off for now. <coughs>
log. Town of Flatwoods. My God. There's no one here. The old tavern, the church. People were using them for shelter, but... They're gone. Mutations we expected. But there's something else. A disease. I was attacked by... Well, it used to be a person. But it had these green, glowing lesions, and its voice... Angry. Tortured. We are one. One what? Whatever happened here is beyond anything we expected. And we expected a lot. Before they were wiped out, the survivors called themselves the Responders. Looks like they were made of firefighters, police, emergency medical staff. They even have an automated system to teach people about treating water, equipment, food, survival. I'm doing their tests, and you should too. I know it's even worse than we imagined, but... Someone's got to know where the missile silos are, and how to secure them. The responders are the best lead we have. This is the Overseer, signing off. Bottom, I think they call it. <laughs> I still miss him. Billy. I knew he was too young for me. <laughs> but it made me feel good. So, uh, it's the old Billy I really miss. The one who used to do nothing all day with me but listen to the radio and drink. Sooner, when Billy and his buddies started torturing little cats and dogs. His friends were no good, but that didn't stop me anyway. I can't believe my wake-up call was watching people's heads get stuck on spikes. So, 
What is an old gal like me to do? Steal all the food. Steal all the camps. And get the hell out of there. <laughs> I'd trade my last bite of food just to see the look on their faces. Oh, I know it's gonna piss off Billy's friends, but I don't give a damn. I should feel sorry in this little town across the river. But if I'm being honest, then that's what this tape is for. I don't really care. I call myself an addict, but, um, it ain't the Kims that finally got me. It was always Billy.
Overseers, all these personal journals, not an official, just something from me. The Agricultural Center, one of my first posts with Vulcan. I was so excited because I used to come to this same farm when I was a kid. I remember one year at the Autumn Festival, me running through the corn maze going every which way, mom and dad yelling after me to slow down. <laughs> Wasn't gonna happen. I guess I was always hitting life fast. Couldn't just be a pioneer scout, I had to make troop leader. Couldn't just be a good student. I had to have straight A's. God, I miss those early days. Being a kid, the three of us, our simple life, our simple house. I wonder if it's still standing. Thank you. 
been selected to become this. Please 
stand still. Farming operations in progress. <laughs> 